My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by... Ian Bruce. And Patrick Kane. Uh, I've been playing a bunch of things. Uh, lots of um, lots of kind of games I'd already been playing have, have had big content updates recently. Um, so, right. uh, Battledome has had like a massive upheaval. Loads of like graphical updates, um, some new maps, um, it's ah, oh, there's this amazing mode on it, which um, it's essentially uh, like a kind of multi-dimensional thing where you can be upside down. So you've got all these platforms all right. which are kind of floating like in the middle of the air, and you can be not only on the top of them as you would normally, <clears throat> but you can be on the side of them or completely underneath. Yes. So you get loads of these situations where your teammates are hanging from the ceiling, like Spider-Man, and they're shooting, and you're shooting as well. Oh, nice. right. But, you, but the, the map is essentially upside down to each of you. Yeah. In, in, in each other's perspective, in, that means. Yeah. So yeah, it's amazing, and it's basically there's a there's a room in the middle of the map, and that's kind of um, just free floating, and you have to navigate through all these different platforms, which is a bit of a kind of a, a head puzzle to get to it. And when you get in there, you're generating points, and it's a good vantage point. So you've got like four windows and you can take out and you can snipe members all the way, way around you. But you've got to, you have to really, it's basically a new thing. You have to get your head around the fact that people are going to be up there and down there and to the sides as well, because there's no up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, oh, it's so good because it's your, you basically have to activate like a spider brain, like just getting through the map. <laughs> So you have to think like, right, where am I going to go? Right, it's going to be that platform, then that platform, then that platform, and then I'm going to get to the middle, and then I'm going to take that over. And it's just, yeah, it's so crazy. So you just you start off, and you just try to get this centre zone and just take out as many people as you like. And um, yeah, just tons of fun. Very, very exciting. But yeah, the graphical light update was really welcome as well because that game looks absolutely potato. So it was yeah. <laughs> nice to have needed some, like, some graphics. <clears throat> yeah, needed some graphics added to it, which is which is which is cool. But not that it really makes that much difference but yeah it's just nice i actually been i last night i played uh the the very first map which is the most common one which is the one i've played like literally thousands of times and it took me three minutes to realize it was the same map because they (laughs) updated the graphics so much and they've actually moved a few bits of the map around i was like oh this is the same one (laughs) but yeah that game is awesome i'm still a huge huge fan of that one um also um Raw data has had has such right. new stuff, but I was going to let Ian talk about that because you've you've been playing it as well. I wanted to know what you what you thought about it. <clears throat> Are you finished with Battle Dome? You can, yeah, talk, talk about raw data. Um, so we use the vibes a lot at work, and I've had some time off the last few weeks, so I took the opportunity to borrow one from the stockpile, brought it home, set it up in this office in quotes gaming room, obviously. Uh, um, didn't want to set it up in the lounge. The stuff in the lounge, I don't want to get in the way. Wife's studying for exams, so she's not 14. She's doing an accountancy exam. <laughs> Does, doesn't um, want you diving over the living room. No, this, that, that wouldn't Neo be welcome. from the Matrix yeah. <laughs> while she's studying. I, I don't need extra 40 effects, Fire in the hole. which is my wife <laughs> whacking me over the head with something big and fucking horrific. Um, so I set it up in here. I, I'd really wanted to play raw data. Um, I'd managed to get... a. Uh, quite a few uh, free keys for uh, some VR games for the Vive which I'll talk about off off air um, and I set it all up bought the leads bought brackets for the for the lighthouses having done some work with lighthouses over the last few months I've got some things that I wanted to set up got it all done perfectly downloaded raw data installed it 
was completely blown away about how it made me feel when I was standing there pulling stuff out of the, the holster, the reload, the, yeah. the, the katana, the, oh, fuck me, I was just, <laughs> I was in, absolutely in heaven. And then I went to the first map. <clears throat> now this room is quite narrow, and the door has a little bit jutting out at the side, so the door is here, and there's a little Ow. bit here, and then another wall. So it's like a, like an, an S, a, a di- diagonal S shape. Gotcha. Which, I'd set it up, I should have set it up in uh, room space, not standing mode, but I would have had the same problem, because I just completely lost where I was. <laughs> um, and as soon as I, as soon, I got into it so fucking quickly, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was that guy in that space within about five seconds, and I was not going to let those fuckers take me out. So I was on the, I was on my knees. I was prone. I'm not prone, but you know, I was on one knee. I was spinning around. I was whacking shit, and I managed to whack my arm into the wall to the join on the door, uh, smash the controller into the wall. Um, initially, I didn't care, but then I remembered not my vibe. Probably shouldn't smash shit up because I'm having a good time shooting uh, robots and the flying things. It was the flying things mainly that put me out because there's... The drones, I, can yeah. just remember, there's I can li- just imagine you taking that in to work going, yeah, you had a good time with that, didn't you? Yeah, with both, with both of my arms in plaster because I've smashed them against the wall. Um, but it's the... I, I could kind of get my position when I was in... When I first stuff at ground level... The, the strafe mechanic became a fucking annoyance very quickly because I found myself strafing into the wall <laughs> <laughs> just to get out of the way of stuff. And then you kind of forget where you are. And this yeah. is why I think for this game, at least, you need proper room space. You, you then forget where you are. And then there's drones above you, so you're looking up and shooting and stuff, which was awesome. And then there's one behind you, so you turn around and whack your arm into the door because you actually are standing right next to the door. Uh, this, this is undoubtedly my error for not setting up the room space <clears throat> correctly because I was just impatient. I, I've done a load of stuff with the Vive over the last year, thought I could deal with it in this tiny little space. Was entirely <laughs> very wrong. Um, but my idiocy aside, the game itself was... Uh, I just... I, we, I went into work the next day and managed to persuade the powers that be to buy it for research purposes so we could use it in the warehouse at work which is good it, it, it's like it's all the things isn't it they like just they just went right what are all the things we it like, is. totally get so hard on in films over the last yeah, but three decades for, for me, and I, they just put yeah. them all in a go yes you sent me that link to that uh, uh, that mill sim game which is kind of like counter strike where you work in oh, a oh yeah the um <clears throat> You work as a team with other players, and you do military objectives for stuff, and it and it looks really good. But yeah. I think this game has the potential to be VR's Quake. I'm sure Battle Dome has some some similarities yeah. as well. I've not played that yet, but this is this for me was so. Oh, this is what I want in VR. This this will yeah. do me in VR for a while if I can just buy a bigger house that has a room for my wife and a, a massive room where I can run around a warehouse, basically like we've got at work, and. Yeah. Just go batshit with this, but I, I, I loved it. Um, it looked like the multiplayer stuff would have been good. Uh, I'm absolutely up for doing some stuff at work with you, Pat, if we can sort some time for that. Oh yes, mate. <clears throat> um, and it, for, the, the thing that got me really was how fucking amazing it looked. And if yeah. you probably were taken out and the adrenaline stopped, it might. I th- it may not be as great as I remember it being, but even the room at the start where you're right, you can go in here and have a bit of practice with the guns. I just looking around going, fuck me, this looks amazing. Uh, this looks absolutely amazing. Um, it, it is, it's just triple A, like all over, isn't it? It's just yeah, the high and, production values all the way through. It. Uh, I love the humour of that game as well. Like all the, the like the, the robot talking to you and stuff. Like it's all really well written. Yeah. And the, the the physical mechanics of using the weapons, I found to be very oh, natural. Yes. And I, I've never, I, I've not used guns really. Have, have you unlocked <clears> like <throat> the um, like the auto unlock and stuff on the on the gun cleric? Where you... No. So it just no, no. Was... I didn't. I, I really, I was really hurting myself after the first round. And I because eventually you can just, you know, how you got your gun holster. Yeah. Eventually, you can just put your gun where your holster is, and it will just automatically reload. 
just really, really quickly. But it's, it, it, it lends the really cool stuff because you'll have your arm extended and you're shooting things in front of you and then just swing round, uh, okay. reload yeah, on yeah. the in way back movement. and shoot something that's right behind you. Yes. Just feel like an absolute like equilibrium lord. I, I did... I love the I love the other controller to reload stuff. I've fired yeah. enough guns when I was younger to know that that it just felt there was a solid smack of you're smacking the controller into the other controller. Yeah, um, that was really really good. Um, yeah, so I wish I, I could I have find that a bigger game space. More, <clears throat> more than more than any other others that I played on the Vive, and like I think this is a general thing about VR, but I think it does it really really well is it it inspires you to role play it basically says right you know all those things you you've wanted to do in films there you go yeah and and i don't it have makes me it yeah. makes me just get into it so I, hard even uh what's the the game with the zombies and you stuck in the forest uh the black haven oh, brookhaven, <coughs> brookhaven. Experiment. even that yeah. i was i was doing this with the light with the torch and the gun yeah because yeah immediately you're you're in that you have exactly, to do that, man. really. Exactly. And yeah, I was. I've got a tiny little space here, and I was on my knees. I was just basically leaping around like a fucking muppet. I, um, I love it. <coughs> I, I've played that first level hundreds of times. I love. I just love the first level so much, and and it doesn't get boring. Like every single time, I know what's coming, yeah. and it's like I. It takes me down in that lift, and I just <coughs> sit on the floor, just sit on the floor, waiting for that first robot to smash through. Then it, when he ca- gets through, I'll just casually get up, pop, yeah. and it's just like it has and many like flawless headshots as you can get. That's yes. how yeah, it's, and it just makes crouching it so and crouching, fucking, like, crouching behind the console and holding the gun up to fire at oh, them. Oh yes, fucking hell, Jesus! <clears throat> I know there are and visual the, animation for other games that will do that. I'll get behind and I'll just spray fire over the thing, but to actually do it, to be crouched down and just firing over the top of something. Yes. Oh, it's it's just it next. Level. It's just it, that has destroyed my stomach. I've got a, I've got a, a stomach of a twenty five year old. Yeah, that was that game. That was just sitting down and popping up. I, and I have to admit I mean, that I've, I've had a pie or two in my life, and that was really one of the reasons why I wanted to get that because that would be a. It works, have, mate. You it having said that, works. it would be a. You know, I've, I've got a bit of extra poundage that I'd like to get rid of, and that seemed like a good fun way that I would actually do instead a of non non boring <coughs> way. Yeah, just. So, work out and have an absolute I'll just laugh. do it at work. Did you, like did, you, did you try the, the, uh, um, the katana throwing stuff? Uh, not the throwing. I did try the katana in the... It, so it's a, yeah, I tried the normal no. katana in the training area bit, ah, okay. which was great. Which is awesome. Yeah, but when you basically use the grip buttons, and you hold them down, and then you throw and release the grip buttons, and that throws the, the katana, and it will spin through the air, and you can move it around the, around the map, and you can take oh, out right. a load of them. You're doing this kind of te- telekinesis, and then you catch it back as a, like a boomerang. It's just like, yeah! <laughs> and there's also telekinesis, which I've, I unlocked uh, the other day, and that that's just like Jedi powers, basically. You just grab onto them, just throw them into a wall, or into one of the other robots. It's just like, Jesus. It's, just, it's just so many just <clears throat> fantasies just, just pushed yes. into one thing that game I was immediately that person in that game and there's yeah. been a you know epic chat does it, there's lots of things Brookhaven did it for me as well but this was there will be loads of them I think but and there will be a lot more undoubtedly but th- yeah. this was it was fucking hell it was a it was something to buy the vibe for in my opinion <clears throat> yeah when there's more to it but yeah it would be a thing to sell the the hardware yeah oh fuck it was awesome yeah <laughs> awesome <clears throat> cool uh, I've been playing something else that again is not in VR but in a kind of weird way it's 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 super immersive um, it's this Mr. Robot game on the uh, on the iPhone <clears throat> Uh, it's I don't know how you say it. It's Mr. Robot 1.51 Xfiltration dot APK. Yep, that looks right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's supposed to be set after like the sixth, ep- <coughs> sixth or seventh episode of this current series. Don't do spoilers. It's, no, it won't. Uh, and basically, you've just got um, Darlene texting you. I think it's her phone that you found. That's the kind of setup. And um, and it's all just text messages. But what she'll do is she'll she'll ask you that she needs to get um, she needs to get someone's password. And so you're kind of then 
you then text this person she gives you the number and then you're sort of doing it's multiple choice it's it's published by telltale but it's actually uh developed by night dive studios who put out a game earlier in the year called oxen free which was very much kind of a uh, dialogue choosing <coughs> side scrolling type thing that was okay but it very wordy um, but this is perfect for that because it's all done in text so uh, and it actually makes you feel a bit rotten while you're doing it because <laughs> because you're sort of um, you're, you're like really invading into people's privacy and like and Elliot does uh, communicate with you as well but he f- he's assuming you're Darlene so if you say something to him and he's a bit like weirded out by it, she'll then text you back later going, please don't say shit like that to Elliot. He <laughs> no, thinks no, it's me. Okay. Yeah. He <clears throat> thinks it's me. So you're, you're like, you end up getting really kind of caught up in the drama and, um, and it, it spams you with loads of junk text and shit as, as well, which is all right. It's a bit annoying, but I think that's the idea is it's supposed to sort of, sort of uh, fold you into that fantasy a bit and stuff. So, yeah that's that it wasn't very expensive but i'm still playing it i've had it for a couple of weeks and because the thing is like you'll do something and she'll say um i'll I'll call you back later with the details or elliot will and so you'll just you'll just put it away and like you know later on in the night you'll notice you've got a notification it's like oh what (laughs) and you end up sat there texting on your phone for like yeah look i just got elliot how are you (laughs) How are you? Rob, we're doing a podcast, mate. You don't see us texting, <laughs> do you? Fucking hell, so rude. Fine. <clears throat> I'll just send that to him. He's going to text me back now. Is it a... Yeah, look, he is. Okay. Okay. So you... So weird! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's, it's a choice of options. You can't write who the fuck are you or last no, episode was shit. Text. Right, okay. But you that get like cool. free... <laughs> <laughs> I thought they did all right in the last episode, considering... I've watched none, none of the, the scenes. So I, I, I'm out of the loop at the moment. Oh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, it's not... Uh, oh, I think I think it's a fantastic show, but we don't need to <clears throat> diverge into that. Uh, have you been watching it, Pat? I the didn't wa- I've been bother watching the second season. Is it, is it good, then? Yeah, f- yeah. <laughs> if you like the first one, it's it's more of that. Yeah, okay. I watched, like, the <laughs> teaser episode or whatever, whatever it was, and it, it just felt a little bit, a little bit flat compared to the, the last bunch, but... If it, if it picks up, I'll check it out. I think it's great, and it's also like an extension of my. Uh, as I was saying to you the other day, it's uh, I'm like living this mad sort of multimedia cyberpunk existence where I I can't get away from hacking or <laughs> anything at the moment. It's yeah. like everything I go near is is fucking <laughs> like you know cyberpunk. Yeah, well uh, we are in the cyberpunk era now. Oh yeah, we are. Can't change that now. No, no. I'll get that genie back in the bottle. It's definitely out no. of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, do, do you want to do another one, Pat? <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so I've also played um, uh, a game called The Last, Last Sniper, I think it is, uh, which we, is a VR sniping game. And it's set in World War Two, And you are... Uh, it's basically <clears> like... Um, yeah, sorry, that's called The Last Sniper. You're basically yeah. at the top of this tower and you're kind of crouching behind crates and stuff and um, you, this German soldier sort of walks past and you have to smack him on the back of the head with a, with a rock and then you pick up your sniper rifle and you just start <laughs> picking off picking off Nazis all around you. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a little bit simple. Like, it's a, it's a, the, game, like the gameplay is a little bit basic and it, it's a little bit buggy as well, but I, I actually only played the demo of it. But um, the atmosphere is really, really cool. It's kind of, it's all really dark and it's raining and there's like planes going over and the, the sound design is really, really awesome. Um, but yeah, I, that was that was a that was a bit of a laugh. But I, I literally only played about ten minutes of that. But the 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 awesome um, sort of thing about it was with the kind of atmosphere, and I just sort of thought like that's going to be like. I just can't wait to play those sort of games. Like when someone with a budget makes a decent VR World War Two shooter, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be the, the 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 missing fantasy from date from raw yeah. data. It's going to be the one thing that that doesn't do. If that makes sense. I um, would. So yeah, I would like to see, and I'm about ready to get back into the. Let's do a game this week. Let's do a game next week, Pat. Um, yeah. Uh, one with one of those massive bombers with lots of different seats and stuff. Oh, 
because I, I know, I know the locomotion it. thing is, is being worked on and there's many different ways of doing it. I thought Raw Data did it really well. Once you get used yeah. to that, I, I really like that. But that kind of works because it's futuristic. I'm not sure it, w- it would work for a yeah. period piece. However, a game where you're stuck in a seat in a plane with other people, where you can communicate yeah. with them and look around and see them going, don't get cocky kid and stuff, that would be pretty good. That would I would be like to see that. An absolute <coughs> dream come true, I think, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure someone's making something like that. Yeah. I'm sure someone is. Um, but yeah, I, uh, the uh, another thing I played, which was uh, totally n- new, and oh, this is so awesome. Uh, it's called Quiver. Uh, it's spelled Q-U-I-V-R. And it's basically, um, it's it's like a Lord of the Rings Legolas experience. So it's multiplayer. Right. <clears throat> I think it's up to about six players. Um, and you've got this kind of castle keep battlements that you've got to you've got to defend and basically you've got a disembodied head where the hmd is and you've got a bow and arrow so you can see the bow and arrow of the other other players and stuff and there's lots of lots of uh points so there's like points really low down points right above the main gate points on the the battlements surrounding the 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 um the area um, and they they have a little kind of blue circle on them, and if you fire an arrow through those blue circles, you teleport to that space. Um, right. So you basically have to dart around. It's a bit of like a tower defense kind of ex- yep. um, kind of game as well. So you you're, you're constantly moving around to to get the best vantage point of of the, the waves coming in, um, and the waves are like things like goblins and spiders and um, like giant orcs, m- massive scorpions, um, flying skull demon things um like basically just all fantasy stuff um and you so yeah you just you're just basically standing there with these other people <clears throat> just again it's 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 the other experience it's like do you want to be in lord of the rings right yeah. you're now in lord of the rings like it's it's so it's so it's brilliant um yeah it's lots and lots of fun it's got um uh it's got like a, a, a kind of upgrade uh, route as well so you've got on your on the main wall behind you is the scores of all the players and the, and the and the order that are in and when you get to certain when you get a certain amount of points you can unlock different abilities for your bow so like the first row you've got like um if you've got an ability to, if you if you miss one of the um enemies but only just it will make an explosion and and take them out um another one that will freeze them another one that gives the keep health back if you every yeah. time you get a headshot so as it's, as it's being smashed and, and going down by the, the other things, you can actually recover it and get to the later waves. Um, and yeah, so th- there's a big upgrade path and there's sort of more and more abilities as you, as you go through the waves and you, 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 have, to, you have to use them um, because they, they get ridiculous. You just get things coming from all over the place. Um, it's, I think it's made by a really small team. Um, it's just a free alpha at the moment. Um, it runs really well, actually. Uh, I haven't really noticed many bugs. There's a few kind of menu things which are a, a, a bit annoying, but in the actual game, it seems to be running pretty smoothly. Uh, and it's a really good way of getting loads of players playing your game as well, just to give away a, a, a free demo, essentially, yeah. and get loads of people playing. And I, I don't know I don't think it's going to be that much when they actually do sell it, but whatever it is. Is, I'm, it, I'm, is it Unity or UE? It's Unity, yeah. Um, and, and the, but recently he's acquired some new members of his team. So he's got mem- uh, a couple of programmers who worked on Diablo two and three, and a new Jesus, art team. Right. So, the, like the the only kind of real criticism I think of it is the like the art assets aren't that good. Yeah. So they they do the job, but they're a, they're a bit kind of simple, and there's a bit of lack of consistency with the styling. I think. Um, but yeah, so they're going to redo all those, which is really yeah. cool. Um, and I guess they'll have other maps and stuff as well. Oh, another thing is uh, it does a really cool thing when you go into spectator mode. Um, you actually change your scale. So you're suddenly like a giant <laughs> above the whole keep. And you can... Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You can duck down and you can, you're like, your your head is like right near the <laughs> like tiny Scarecrow little players. Like Scarecrow in Arkham Asylum. The, yeah. the other players in the room yeah. are tiny. They've got these tiny yeah. little bow and arrows. And you're like... Oh, oh that's oh. awesome. That's really good. So good. So good. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's been, been an absolute... Cracker. Yeah, they've been raving about the spectator mode for Dota on the Vive. Yeah, I haven't lately. tried that yet. But yeah, people are saying that's like ridiculous. 
Yeah. Like, I think that's got a similar sort of thing where you can shift your scale and then be right down amongst the players. Yeah. Following them around and in amongst the action and stuff. It's, it's really, like, really like a next level to just watching someone play it on a, on a 2D screen, isn't it? To actually yeah. just, like, get in the <clears throat> game. And they have, like, podiums, I think, with, like, all the the current players you're watching and stuff on the side with their stats and things. So it's yeah. like there's loads of loads of cool things going on with that. With this cute uh, quiver, um, yeah. do, you, do you think... Because, I mean, the other one had a free demo. Are, are you finding that a, a, a more now on the Vive games? It's like getting more the, common, yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because Brookhaven Experiment yeah. had a demo as well. It did, yeah. Um, yeah, quite a few things have, <coughs> have, 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 have demos, which is really cool. It's, I think it's really useful for multiplayer stuff because, like I said, that that kind of lets you gauge really well before the game comes out how many people are playing it, and you get you know you get really good information doing it that way. Didn't, and also, it just gets people playing it. It's, it it's, yeah. encourages it's a bit shareware, uh, weary, isn't it? That's, that's exactly what you want. It's a bit share weary. So, it's like it's gone full circle, yeah, and now this new back tech to, is back to Doom discs. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> definitely, definitely yeah well it's it's kind of telling isn't it I mean it's an experimental system and so I mean yeah it's going back to that culture again of you kind of have to try before you buy and just kind of reduces a whole lot of friction yeah I mean really. the other side of it is that a lot of the games are obviously really cheap as well there's a huge amount of, of games that are like under a fiver which is you know the other way of doing it because people are just willing to chuck away a fiver yeah. um, a lot of the time um, and yeah, I think we, I think it's really I, I, yeah, I just think it's really really cool that it you can just pick up an experience like that and just play it now. And but yeah, it's definitely going to make me buy it when it comes out, which is the whole point. It's it's, yeah. it's worked like it's it's definitely worked. And I, I actually had a really similar idea to, to to this game. So like for me, it's like yes, <coughs> you just made the thing yeah. I wanted. So it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so cool. But I, I really want to see like this sort of experience, but made like just slightly more complex. Because I want to see this game, but where you've got a mage as well, and a barbarian, yep. and a dwarf. You know, I just want to see healers. This. Healers would, would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and just just to get just to get the gameplay mechanic, just that next level of complexity and and, and awesomeness. I yeah. But it, it's really cool. It's really cool, and it. It's like the first one, so like you're you can do see that by like you could do something like that where you'd literally be like, if you go over there, you're a healer now. If you go up there, you're an archer. Mm. If you get down the front, you've got a spear. Yeah, you know, you could do that literally by moving around. Mm. Something like that. Definitely. Yeah. But, but now the other thing is, of course, with the free demo thing, you still got the refunds on Steam, which I've actually used yeah. and work quite well. You can only play for two hours, but then, I don't know, that's that's not a bad amount of time to kind of decide whether you think something is worth your money or not, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> plenty, plenty of people have done that on, well, I've read, like, plenty of people have done that on Reddit, you know, they've bought like an 18 quid game and yeah. they've, you know, they've wrote, you know, this game is, is good, but it's, you know, it's or no too Man's much money Sky. Or no man's yeah. Sky, yeah. But you know, you know, it's not ready yet, and I'll pick it up later. They and it's just so cool that you can do that. It's yeah, I did it with Windlands because, like, I thought it was a great idea, enough for me to buy it in the sale. But hmm. um, it's just, I just wanted, I just wanted, wanted the contr- the controllers, yeah, the touch for yeah. it. Because it just yeah. seems so weird, like skating around <clears throat> with a controller. I just could not deal with it. It works quite well <laughs> with a mouse, if I remember correctly. Did it work with a oh. mouse? Was it? I don't know. I, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I, but. maybe I don't know. If, I, I have. I've definitely done it with a controller. Okay. Um. What have you been playing? Anything else, Ian? Um, That's a loaded question. I know he has. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Well, yes, yes, I have. Um, the one that I, I know we were pondering a discussion about Assassin's Creed Two and games of yore being things to go back to when there's a drought. But I would like to talk about Rise of the Tomb Raider, which we sure. touched on some months ago when it came out, and I got a free key for it through work, and I didn't get very far into it, but for whatever reason, tired or something, it just felt like it was a bit boxy, and it was, oh, I'll just go over here and pick up these twigs and do stuff, and go over here and do stuff. <clears throat> Sometimes that's all you need. It is, but I've spent more time on the first kind of hub area, the Soviet installation, and... 
I'm really loving it. And also, I'm using key- keys and mouse, which is a bit really? weird. Really? Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure why. I think I'm getting on in life, and my reaction and fucking patience with trying to aim shit with a fucking controller, that's certainly waning. So I'd rather... Just use a shotgun. That's my <coughs> yeah, so, normal approach, is just use a shotgun. When I play GTA, I've got... <laughs> Roll around. I use the controller for the car, but if we're doing... Uh, close combat stuff or I need to shoot somebody in the head I'll drop the controller on my lap and use my mouse and keys and then go back and do it afterwards which is okay that works but I'm really it, it's I'm really loving it I've also got a bit of a hardware problem with my PC where I believe it to be DX12 games are crashing my PC completely when I exit them so Rust oh, yeah. um, and Rise of the Tomb Raider Just Cause 3 other games that are just I've been running at Uber Ultra, which might be a problem. Uh, they've been crashing my PC. So I've turned some stuff down. I've turned the Steam overlay off, which is another potential reason. Uh, and it still looks beautiful. It still looks really, really lovely. Um, yeah. There's a chance I've got to a point where I'm going to stop the fucking minecar dungeon tomb thing. Oh, fuck you. I, why do I need to release that minecar and then jump on the thing that's going to let it through? You twisted evil bastards that made that perhaps there's an easier way and at some point I'm fairly you're quite sure I'll Google it. if you're at that bit <clears throat> I think um, I, yeah I, pl- I probably I mocked you earlier of playing 10 hours of uh, Deus Ex yesterday Deus Ex. but I did about 10 hours of Rise of the Tomb Raider yesterday um, <laughs> and yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it I, I do love the way that game it makes you it's the lack of UI that does it for me you, it's not overloaded with a ton of Oh, there's all these things to read, and in the middle there's a little bit of a cool world. There's just nothing there except for when you get to things and you're interacting with them. And I really you like know how I feel <coughs> about UI. Yeah, I hate UI. <coughs> um, there was also it's, it's worth mentioning that uh, I think this port was handled by Nixis, who do all of Square's ports, yes. including the Deus Ex, and they port. have a good rep by all accounts. <coughs> it's it's the same engine as well as uh, that. Is in Deus Ex, although Deus Ex is their newest version of it. So right. uh, I've seen some of the. It's got. It's, Go on. It's got. It's got quite a bit in common. You know, they're both from the same lineage. Yeah. Of uh, uh, tech. I've seen some gameplay stuff of the Deus Ex game, and it, that looks beautiful as well. But it's the open. The people look. The people look better <clears throat> in Tomb Raider, though. I have to say, really? I think on account of there being less of them. Uh, so they could just put a bit more time. Yeah. It's not really yeah, yeah. a technical constraint. It's more of a, <laughs> we need loads of people to walk down this street, so some of them do look a little bit PS2 era. But anyway, sorry, carry on. I'm digressing. <laughs> yeah, so the, the lack yeah. of the UI is beautifully refreshing. Um, yeah. I've also been playing a bit of Soma. Uh, hum- I've joined Humble Bundle's uh, cheap yeah. monthly thing. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm, that's prompted me to go to... I'm probably going to start playing that uh, one again. That was I've... A- and I'm doing pretty well with it, actually. I'm playing during the day. All the lights are on. I've got a nice, reassuring <laughs> cup of coffee. And I, Benny Hill in the background. I'm usually on the phone to my mum at the time, just in case there's anything <laughs> scary. Uh, but uh, that looks great as well. The underwater stuff was... I spent a lot of time just going, fuck. Gorgeous, fuck. Let's go back and spend some more time on... Fuck, I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> Soma. No. Oh no! What the? Uh, Pat's release. Before? Black box. Yes, black box. Because <laughs> oh, that, oh, you could do that by that doing this. Like, you could do that by doing this. You could. <laughs> yeah. You imagine how that was like for me after like six sure. months of being on the bottom of the sea, and obsessing over those yeah. details, and then playing a game where someone had done it with a massive budget. And I was yes. like, and they've got little <gasps> shells on the on the sand that are different <laughs> shells and not part of the t- yeah. texture. It's not part of the material. Yeah. I um, love that game. I really <coughs> love that game. I thought the writing was and, incredible on it. I love the story. And that's, and that's also... Um, so I have been playing... I don't want to go on about this for too long, but I have been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed 2 over the last five weeks, of which I've had four weeks <laughs> off. Um, <clears throat> and pr- I think primarily because the cutscenes are unskippable in AC2, I have been really getting into the story. I've been loving the intricacies of who he is and what he's doing. And oh, it's Leonardo and it's the thing and stuff. And it's got Kristen Bell in it or Kirsten Bell, whichever one it is. So yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but normally, if there it's is the- a, if there is an opportunity for me to skip a cutscene or a piece of exposition, I just don't care <clears throat> because most of the games that I play and most of us play, you just need to get from here to there, 
if you want to read while you're doing that, that's okay. But you don't need to know why you're doing that to do it. You're, you're the <clears> doom <throat> guy. I am the doom guy, I'm afraid, yes. <laughs> I just want to find the key and plug it in the hole. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> with Soma, I have been... I've just been soaking that up. Jesus, it's just... I was kind of like this with Outlast as well. Just getting into the lore and ev- all everything about it just because it was really grabbing me um, and I have been enjoying that a lot so if I'm not scared shitless already and there certainly have been times where I've thought no I, I'm, I'm going to go and stroke a cat or something <laughs> because I, I'm shitting myself um, there was a few that were just a little bit well just a lot worse than the other bits I found yeah whereas stuff like Outlast is that's horrific from the start yeah, and yeah that, it doesn't, doesn't, that gets to 11 like, and doesn't stop you know within the first 5 minutes if you're going to hate it or yeah. if you're going to endure it but, but Soma I has hated but Soma, it. I, I hated it and, and that's fair <laughs> enough but Soma so I think because Finally of that unpleasant. because of the intro bit of Soma in your flat there's context and stuff and there's there's a bit of background yeah. in the same Firewatch isn't scary at all but that was fuck me that was an amazing game because there's a lot of the pr- the prologue for it puts you into what you're doing instead of just ah, scary. Yeah, um, and I'm really enjoying that about Soma, and I'm enjoying that about Rise of the Tomb Raider, even with skippable cutscenes there. Um, so there is something to be said about quality of writing in video games. It's, it's good also- when they don't. It's Sorry. good when they kind of blend it together, you know, when you, you don't have that jarring transition where it's like, oh, I have to now watch you do yes. a load of cool stuff that I could have done. Yeah. Oh, or, that's yeah, annoying, or, oh shit, now there's some story stuff. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, that's what I like about Deus Ex, because most of the time you are doing the cool <clears throat> thing. Yes. Even if it's a takedown, which you have to kind of watch. That's not too different different to the, the combat in Assassin's Creed, yeah. which is yeah. mostly you watching... Do to do cool animations. I yes, mean, and it's that, especially in AC2, the combat is. I'll just mash B then, shall I? That's about all I really yeah. need to do to take everybody out. Um, yeah, but I don't mind about that because the combat is an annoyance for me because I want to get here and find out more about the story. And I know some I of the don't think combat they're... is the story, but <clears throat> yeah, I don't think in Assassin's Creed 2, I don't think the combat had evolved quite to the point where it is at now, where it's a series of chained manoeuvres that you have yes. to keep going. I, I do. Uh, I have, I've also been playing some Syndicate over the last... That was another free game I got through work. Um, the oh, FPS. Is that the, the... Yeah. No. The... Oh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed Syndicate. Syndicate oh, which right, is sorry. extremely polished, and I'm enjoying that a lot, but the traversal stuff has so dramatically changed for me in that game. It stopped... Cut, there is a chance that you're going to fall off the wall in AC2, but that's extremely unlikely in Syndicate because you just push the uh, climb button and then you've gone halfway across London, really, and you don't have to go, oh, no, I've got to be careful with this jump. It will just do it all for you. And I, that's a right. bit of a cop-out. I liked having, I liked going, oh, fuck, I'm falling. I've got to grab on something. I like that yeah. in AC2, but I don't, I can't make myself do that in Syndicate. I just, oh, I've just, I've done all the jumping. Excellent. All I did was just think- hold this button. Hmm. I think they. I think that came in where, in three when they started putting the trees in <coughs> and the tree climbing because it was so like impossible yeah. for you to and Unity get had over it as that well. random um, shape. Did you Black had to Flag just... hang it? I think Black Flag had it as had it a bit. It, it had trees certainly. Thanks for that, um, mate. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, in depth gaming saying. knowledge. <laughs> well, because they could then. It's the Ubisoft thing, isn't it? It's just the yes. Ubisoft game yeah. that. That, that has more stuff in it as they go on. I'm surprised there aren't any trees in the division. <laughs> <laughs> You've been playing Abzu, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about Abzu, actually. Um, it's almost like um, what I can best describe as Windows 95 screensaver, the video game. <laughs> right. Because it's basically... it's it. I, there was at times I was playing it thinking, this is just like the coolest screensaver in the world. Um, but that's selling it short, to be honest, because it is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the one of the guys that had something to do with Journey. Yeah. Um, so you've got that kind of just amazingly cool, like when you're f- going through all these schools of fish, mm-hmm. and like if you can crank it right up to Ultra, like there are just more fish than you can possibly comprehend. It's like a, it's like a real sort of... Sc- 
schools of like hundreds of these fish that you're going through cool. um but yeah you're like this little diver dude and you've got to um there's some sort of story that's conveyed like via these sort of uh glyphs you see on the walls and uh like hieroglyphics and stuff but it's right. quite vague deliberately vague it's not very long it's a bit like, like journey you... then yeah i finished it in a couple of hours there's no multiplayer element like journey though there's right. it's very solitary it's very very chilled out game um it didn't take me very long to finish um but i enjoyed it you know you you're just swimming around <laughs> i tell you what it really annoyed me about it was i just having to control the camera like i just was <laughs> like this is just crying out for being a vr game yeah where all you have to worry about is moving your dude around and then being able to look all around take in all of the amazing beauty around you um and then like as you if you you could like focus on fish and get that info because there's like a whole button for doing that where you're going right. to like a viewing meditative mode which is just stupid and they should have just put the time into making it a vr game um <laughs> Uh, Rolf, uh, so creatively. Can you, can you did you say you can't move the the camera normally then when you when you in the normal game? You can with your thumb. But it's it's just yeah. it's just annoying. I just found it annoying. Um but it it was fine. You get used to it and 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 like there's 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 like nothing to do in the game. You swim around. There are some brilliant bits where, you know, like Flower and Journey, I guess, where you're kind of getting sucked along through the slipstream and the music soars and it's just beautiful, you know, like amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and and that's all really enjoyable. Um, I couldn't really tell you what the story was. It was very vague, <coughs> open to interpretation. No, nothing. Artsy. No... Yeah, no, 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 nowhere near the depth of something like Inside, um, but it, it's a, it's a good, it's a nice experience. It, like I say, I, I think they, I think you know what I mean, Pat. If you play it, and yeah. you'll be like, God, why is this not in VR? Yeah, it does look like it. It should be. I agree. Yeah, but uh, it was fairly cheap, and two hours, and I'm glad I glad I gave it a go. Um. What else did I play? Oh, yeah, I've been massively hacking my way through my pile of shame. I started Far Cry Blood Dragon. I haven't finished it. I'm about halfway through it, I've, I think. I didn't realise it's actual Michael B. Yep. Does the voiceover. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, I just Very love when fun. all the tutorials are popping up, and he's just like... Argh! Just like... <coughs> you know... Just can't be dealing with... And, and like, she's... the. The girl's on the comms and she's saying, you've got to go in there and sp speak to this guy. And he's like, ah, objectives. <laughs> <laughs> just wants to go in there and just kill stuff. Um, but it's quite small for a Far Cry game. There are all those outposts. You can out unlock them all if you want, but I'm probably not going to bother doing that. I think you just get weapon upgrades for that. I've already got a minigun, which is hilarious because he's like, ah, <laughs> with the mini as he's firing it. <laughs> There's also these big uh, blood dragons stomping about. You, uh, As you kill dudes, you get this pheromone that you can lob. I think it's the same mechanic that you have with the lures in Far Cry. But you, this huge thing will just come along and just you can use it as a weapon. Um, but you, you have to sneak around it yourself. So it's quite interesting for, a, for a, you know, what is essentially just an add-on yep. standalone thing. Have you played it? Uh, I've played some of it. It's it's just an expansion pack, isn't it? Good old yeah, fashioned expansion much. pack, which is I, great. I've got it. I, re I really, I really loved it. Especially, mainly just for the humour. Yes, yeah. it's, it's so essentially what Far Cry funny. Primal should have been. Some would argue. Yeah. Although that's yeah, well, that's, that's what got assets, that's what so a load of assets and stuff. But yeah, I, I that's what I don't think anybody would have paid forty quid for Blood Dragon. No. But they probably made more money on people playing paying fifteen quid for it because it's hilarious and it yeah. feels like that kind of game. It's like some mm. of the old Quake stuff and Quake Two stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well they've tried to blood dragon some of their other fran franchises. Well, they tried to do it with trials, but I think that all went horribly wrong. I heard that was not good. Um but yeah, they did. They did Trials of the Blood Dragon. Oh, they right. they okay. announced it at E3 and it just died a death. 
because uh, yeah, they just didn't know what else to do with it. <laughs> um, Apart from tr- right, trying to else? milk it. Yeah. This has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam, Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Well. I'm rooted, my friend, I'm in to agree, cause I suck, you suck, I suck at-